Hey, what's up, Jonas B here, and today we're talking about FSOs. If you don't know what that means, well, you might be lucky, but what that really means is fire safety officers. And why is that relevant to drones? And why would I be the one talking about that? So let's get into it. All of the drone regulations that we have to adhere to in Part 107 and all the other things we're doing are actual federal regulations. So the Federal Aviation Administration is the one who sets those policies, sets the laws, and sets the way that we operate as commercial or recreational drone pilots. And what's happening when it comes to drone permitting all around the country is that a lot of the enforcement of that is being left up to states, which also delegate it to local uh, municipalities, whether that be cities or towns. Obviously, I live in California, and I live in Los Angeles. And the way that it happens here is if you get a permit to fly drones, you get assigned what is called an FSO, Fire Safety Officer. Now, when this first started happening, you have to ask questions like, why would a drone pilot need a fire safety officer? And so for me, I used to justify it and think like, okay, well, I guess if the drone crashes and a battery is punctured, then there is a fire hazard. But then you get to set and you realize a fire safety officer literally shows up with nothing but a uniform. So what I found is a few different things. First of all, the reason why the fire department is actually doing it is simply because of a manpower issue. Originally, it was given to the police department. They said they didn't have the manpower to manage this and look over it. So they passed it off to the fire department, who also tried to pass it off, but they couldn't because there's no one else to pass it off to. And they do have the manpower. So the fire department is now responsible for looking over and making sure that drone pilots are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that's the idea. They show up to help enforce and make sure the, lo the laws and regu regulations of drone pilots are being adhere to the right way. So making sure you're not flying over 400 feet. If you're in restricted airspace of some sort where you can't fly up to 200, over 200 feet, then make sure you're not doing that. You're not flying over people that are involved with the uh, production and other things like that. Obviously, you can look into the, own, the drone laws of all the things you're supposed to be following as a commercial pilot. And obviously, I have other videos on that that we can put links to in the description. But what you need to know is that the FSO is a very, very interesting situation. Every single time one of them shows up to set with me, they are they handle it completely subjectively. Some of them show up and they're like, let me see your license, let me see your, your registration for your drone, let me see all this, even though they already given all the permit information. They're given all the things that you have to submit to get the permit, which normally is all the information that you could possibly have about flying the drone. They already have that information. Some of them wanna see it. They'll talk with you about it, they'll be by the book, they'll watch everything you do, and they're just really on it. Whereas other FSOs are super laissez-faire. They show up and they're like, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah, you flying the drones? Oh, what kind of drone is that? Oh, that's cool. All right, cool. Well, y'all ha have fun. Let me know if you need anything. And they literally don't even pay attention. Like, they're in their phone. They're doing whatever. But what you need to know about this is that I always recommend you make sure you have all of your paperwork with you in line as well as your license and that you're willing to answer any questions and make sure they're aware of every single thing you're doing. So every single time we're going to take off, regardless of how laissez-faire or not, I always say, can you please come over here? Or if you'd like to, we're about to take off. Come over here and take a look. Here's what we're going to be doing. The director wants this. This is what that. I keep them informed so that they feel like they're involved and that they also can let us know if there's any concerns they have about any kind of safety issues for what we're doing. That for me is, I found the best way to work with them. I actually had to talk to another drone pilot earlier uh, named Wolfgang Weber to find out. I was thinking like, well, you know, I've got a lot of FSOs assigned to me when I do permits in LA, but what about other places? Because I've flown obviously in multiple countries and multiple states, and I was trying to rack my brain to think if I've ever actually had other FSOs. And he reminded me that we did actually have an FSO in San Francisco. Same exact situation, same exact thing. And I was like, okay, what about outside of California? And I was like, I don't know. I've never been assigned one. The closest I've ever actually gotten is having police officers with us or having police officers harass us, which I did a whole separate video about, about a police officer harassing while we were flying legally with permits. Um, but that's a whole separate video. You can find it uh, in the links below. The real thing was trying to find out like what, uh, what is happening in other municipalities. And it's actually not that easy. And that's what actually makes being a commercial drone pilot a little bit more difficult is that there isn't a blanket law set that says every single time you're gonna have a fire department official, or a fire safety advisor, or officer, I'm sorry, with you or a police officer, or sometimes they just give you a permit and let you fly. It just really depends on where you are. So the best advice I can give you outside of California is make sure that you just have all that information. Make sure that you are always getting the permit when you are doing commercial flights, specifically when it's doing with productions, like for real. And, you know, read the re regulations of your local municipalities and where you're flying to make sure that you don't get in trouble. Because, like I said, in the video that I had, if I wouldn't have my paperwork, I honestly might have been able to go to jail. So that leads to wonder what's going to happen because there obviously is going to be some more laws coming for commercial pilots. I've already made other videos about how they're relaxing some of the regulations so that commercial drones can actually
actually deliver products and things like that, which also means they're looking at all of the aspects of what it is to be a commercial pilot to be able to make the regulations and the laws more easy to be enforced as well as easy to follow and be, make it so that people can make a living from drones. So what does that mean for us as commercial cinematographers or commercial drone pilots? The thing that I would recommend over everything else is make sure you always have your paperwork, make sure you always have your license on you, make sure you, you stay insured and you look up and research where you're flying and what you're doing. And that's the best way to protect yourself because there's no way we're going to know what the laws are going to do, but we do know what they are now. And if you can follow them to the best of your abilities, then it's going to save you like it did me. All right, Joners, thank you so much for listening in. I hope that you learned as much as I thought I taught. If you want to see more things that I found really interesting about drone law and commercial drone work, you can find it right here. Or if you want to see the coolest intro video to a drone channel that's ever existed, yeah, we got that. It's right here. As always, I would really appreciate your support by going ahead, subscribing, and turning on that notifications bell so you can know whenever I'm dropping that new hot fire. And make sure you stay fly.